So in this video, I'm gonna tell you the second best method to recover from a hard bike ride. So the second best way to recover from a hard bike ride the previous day is to actually just ride very, very easily in what's called zone one. So zone one is a situation where you're just kind of riding and smelling the roses. Just riding around like you're just riding to uh, the location where you would normally do a bike ride in the early morning. So it's an extremely easy bike ride and because right now, for some odd reason, we're having 46 mile per hour winds outside, I'm just gonna ride my rollers. And I set my timer here for about 20 minutes. And this, the purpose of doing this is to simply just get circulation going into your leg muscles. So what you're doing is you are hopefully increasing blood flow into your leg muscles, which brings nutrients and oxygen to those muscles. And with the very easy muscle, muscle contractions, you are stimulating the lymph vessels to pump fluid out. So good circulation in, crap coming out of your muscles. The purpose of that is, that is essentially the definition of what we're trying to accomplish when we recover from cycling. Now, let's talk about the number one thing that you need to do to recover from a long, or difficult bike ride, and that is your nutrition. Now, cycling is different than weightlifting, and I'll discuss that in just a moment. But with cycling, you are exact, essentially exhausting the nutritional supplies of your muscles. You're really not damaging the muscle you're exhausting it and challenging, challenging its ability to utilize oxygen and utilize nutrients. So by the time you're done with a long bike ride, you have essentially depleted its ability to utilize oxygen and you've essentially depleted its ability or the nutrients. So the number one thing to do when you finish a bike ride is as immediately as you can, within a half an hour, start restoring nutrients to your body. So you need to eat. It's not good to finish a bike ride and then go take a shower, rest, and eat later. It's more important that when you get home that you eat something. Now, what should you eat? You know, that's debatable to a lot of people, but it's actually very simple. You could have a smoothie, of which I'll put a smoothie recipe at, at the end of the video. I'll put a uh, good smoothie, lots of nutrients. You essentially want just health food, some vegetables, you want some fruit, you want maybe turkey, chicken, nuts, you know, that's basically what I'm putting in the smoothie, minus the chicken. But think of a chicken sandwich or chicken salad with an apple, and a lot more vegetables. 
that would be awesome. However, sometimes you get home and you stink and you want something quick. So there's lots of recovery foods that you could buy, but essentially you want to eat. Then you go take a shower, then you come back out of the shower and you eat a bigger meal. So you want to eat and restore the nutrients into your body. That's number one. The next day, you will get blood flow going, but you're not riding super hard. And that's what I'm doing today. Now let's talk about some things that do not work. Let's contrast cycling with kind of a bodybuilding or strength sport. When you do, for example, weightlifting, the best recovery would be some type of high protein. And the reason why is because when you exercise with weights, you get sore. And you tell me if this happens to you, but no matter how hard I ride, I may get tired and exhausted, but I never get sore. And the reason why is because with cycling, you're never doing what's called an eccentric activity, which is what causes soreness and damage to the soft tissue when you lift weights. So for example, when you lower the weight down, that's called an eccentric contraction. A concentric contraction is when you contract the muscle and lift the weight. So the research has shown that what happens is when you're doing eccentric contractions, you are actually damaging the muscle tissue. Now you're not exhausting the nutritional status or the oxygen capacity of the muscle. You are damaging the tissue. And how do you repair damaged tissue? What nutrient do you need? Protein. So that would be the emphasis of that type of recovery. Now ironically, the second best way to recover from some type of weight training would be what I'm doing right now again. So if you lifted heavy weights the previous day, one thing you could do is get on a bike for 20 minutes and actually just circulate very easily, you know, no pressure, nothing, not hard pedaling, but circulation into the muscles because again, what are you trying to do? get blood flow into the muscle so it rec can recover and to get the bad crap out of the muscle. I mean, no one's gonna say that the best way to recover from exercise is to cut off blood flow. Doesn't make any sense. So now, let's talk about things that we think work, but Research has shown that it kind of doesn't. It may, may not, some just don't. And by the way, I didn't mention this, but I've been a cyclist all my life. I participated in a lot of different sports, but I've been riding bikes all my life. And so I've seen trends come and go, but these tend to work. So let's talk about number one, the thing that even though we feel like it does something, the research hasn't really demonstrated that is stretching. And so we all think that stretching is important and a lot of people think that stretching helps them. And if you find that stretching helps you, then you should continue to do that. The problem is when they do research, it's not that conclusive. So stretching, does not really help with recovery. It may help with the pain signals that you're feeling. So just because you have less pain doesn't mean the reco muscle recover. The second thing is anti-inflammatory drugs. Early on in my career, the thought was that when you exercise, you're creating inflammation and if you were to 
stop that inflammation, you know, with a drug, then you would essentially uh, get better quicker. And the answer was, actually, when you take an anti-inflammatory, you do reduce the pain, but that interferes with the ability of the muscle tissue to actually get stronger and recover, particularly after strength workouts. So you've got this situation where people think that recovery means pain relief. And the inflammatory process, particularly after eccentric exercise, is part of the equation of getting better and recovering and becoming stronger. So as uncomfortable as it is, I understand people want pain relief, but I'm also a chiropractor and I want patients to actually get better, not just have pain relief because quite frankly, pain relief is easy. Just give people drugs. That's easy to do. The hard part is getting healthy. And if you exercise and damage tissue with the purpose of giving them that time to recover and grow stronger, you don't want to interfere with that process. And inflammation is a process by which your body creates a situation where there's white blood cells and there's the lymph flow, pulls all the damaged tissue and materials out, more blood flow goes in. So inflammation is actually good. So even though it reduces your pain, uh, anti-inflammatories, no bueno for recovery. So I just personally don't take them. Number three, ice. Now this is very controversial because many years ago, people started doing ice baths after um, long bike rides and workouts. And currently now, I live in California, and about 45 minutes from here is the Red Bull Performance Center. And they have a thing there where you stand in this, in this chamber, and I forgot what they use, but it goes down to like 100, minus 130 degrees, and it flashes cold onto you. And the whole purpose of that is to aid recovery, that's what it says. The second thing is when, you, when they flash that much cold on you, the idea is it stimulates a fight or flight situation in your body and your brain, particularly your pituitary gland and other glands, will stimulate anabolic hormones and that helps with recovery. Now that type of cold might be good, but most of the research has been questioning whether ice actually does, or ice baths actually do help recovery. Now, I drank the Kool-Aid about 10 years ago and started doing ice baths after um, hard bike rides and weight training. And I did notice I felt better, I had less pain, but I'm not sure if it was mental, but I did feel better, less pain. But again, like I mentioned before, when we talk about recovery, we want to exhaust the muscle and then nutritionally supply it with the nutrients, get blood in and out, fluids in and out, and wait until it's stronger before you hit it again. And the ice they found, just like anti-inflammatories, might actually interfere with the long-term gains that we're trying to make. So for example, with weight training, if you're trying to build muscle, why would you ice bath? The answer is because it hurts. But we're not trying to stop pain, we're, stop, we're trying to grow muscle. So same thing here is, you can see I'm sweating now, this is good. It means my heart rate's going up and I'm doing good here. So 
ice baths, I did for a while, and I found the mental torture of having to get in that bathtub with 20 pounds of ice in it was more stressful than just waiting a day and recovering. Now, the last thing that people will do that they think has recovery performance, and it may, it's just it costs money, is compression. And wearing compression, compression garments, like compression socks and things that go on your legs, those actually do make you feel more refreshed. The question is, is it helping recovery or is it helping pain? The research is that it's probably helping pain because it's helping edema. And there are some products where they are, they cover your entire legs and they're pneumatic devices and they're like blood pressure cuffs and they squeeze your calves and then relax and then squeeze your knees and relax and squeeze your thighs and relax. And the purpose of those is, again, to assist the lymph flow from your distal legs up towards your heart. Well, those things are expensive, like a thousand dollars. And the nice thing about them is, you can put them on and just watch television, you know, Netflix. But my question is, if that's the physiological goal, then why not just ride a bike for 20 minutes? So that's my thinking, save a thousand dollars and use that thousand dollars for cycling toys, right? You see how much time I have. So hopefully this video has been informative to you. Hopefully you got something out of it. There's other videos on the internet that contradict what I'm saying. There's other videos on the internet that say exactly what I'm saying. And what I would recommend to you is to experiment and try different recovery methods and see objectively what you feel, what you notice in your own body. Because for example, if I was selling a stretching program, I'm naturally gonna argue that stretching is good for you. But as a chiropractor, I notice many people come in and I ask them a series of questions and I'll say, do you stretch? And they go, yeah, well, not really as much as I should. And I say, well, if stretching was that good, why don't you do it? And a lot of people say, they almost feel guilty, like they committed a sin. They'll say, well, I don't really notice it helps. And they know that they would be shamed if they went on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram and said stretching doesn't work because so many people would attack them. So listen to your own body. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to every, everybody else. Listen to your own body and don't feel guilty if something like an ice bath doesn't seem to help you as much or don't feel guilty if stretching doesn't feel as good as everybody says it should. And so what you'll find is you'll come up with your own recovery process and my goal here is to simply share with you what I've found and what I've found of from cycling all my life as well as being a chiropractor for over 25 years and dealing with a lot of sports injuries. Because after that amount of time, you start to discover exactly what works and what doesn't.